So here we are guys for the incident analysis for the 2019 French Grand Prix from Paul Ricardo race. There of course was not that exciting but there were a couple incidents that I'm going to analyse in this video. And first off let's look at the incident at the very end of the race between Daniel Ricardo, Lando Norris and also Kimi Raikkonen at the chicane on the Mistral straight. Now first we're going to look at at the first penalty Daniel Ricciardo got that dropped him from P7 down to P11 at the end of the race. So here you can see Ricciardo DRS open in the slipstream and by this point when he gets to the chicane he is not fully passed he hasn't completed the overtake as of yet but he does have most of his car ahead. Now, at this point, Daniel Ricciardo goes off the circuit because he carried just a bit too much uh, speed into the chicane. Now, Daniel Ricciardo was actually not punished for overtaking Norris off the circuit. What he was punished for, for the first penalty, was re-entering off the track and forcing Norris off the circuit on the exit of the chicane. And when it comes to that, it's pretty difficult to say whether Ricardo was deserving of that penalty or not. It's very difficult to say, honestly, because you can see here again, Ricardo is off the track, but then as we move it on, he comes back on track, and he is, as you can see on his steering wheel, he is turning to the right as much as he can to try and get back on the racing line and not force Norris off the track. And then at this point, you can see Lando Norris alongside. And then Norris eventually goes off the circuit. The reason I'm kind of not sure if this was a penalty absolutely 100% is because part of me says that Lando Norris could have stayed on circuit because as you can see here, Norris is not exactly being absolutely forced off the track by Ricardo, And Ricardo, I think, did try to not force him off the circuit but then part of me says that if you compare it to the Sebastian Vettel incident in Canada Ricardo was certainly a lot more in control of what he did in this incident than Sebastian Vettel was in Canada so I guess by that uh, rule it should be a penalty but it's very hard for me to absolutely say yes or no whether this is a penalty. Let me know in the comments, guys. Do you think this is a penalty or do you think Daniel Ricciardo should not have been penalised for this incident? But I will say, I believe Daniel Ricciardo did deserve a penalty for the racing of Norris, but not for forcing another driver off the track. For me, he should have got a penalty for overtaking Norris off the circuit because if we go back a couple pitches, and now you can see he completed the overtake off the circuit. And of course, that is not allowed. So I think Ricardo did deserve a penalty, but not necessarily for that incident. So I guess he should have got a penalty, but again, not for that. But now let's go on to his second penalty. And this penalty is absolutely correct. So after Norris went off the track and Ricardo got back into I believe it was P8 Kimi Raikkonen had just got past because he capitalized on Ricardo and Norris racing very hard Ricardo going up to turn 11 got right in the slipstream and tried to get past Kimi Raikkonen but the thing is the reason he got a penalty is because the only way he was able to get past Kimi Raikkonen at the very end is because as you can see here he went off the circuit now the reason he gained on Kimi Raikkonen in this incident is because the only way he could get enough alongside with his car to get past is because he went off the track. Because if he stayed within the white lines of the circuit and went, say, to the outside of Kimi Raikkonen, I don't believe Daniel Ricciardo would have got past. And you can see as we move on, he's still off the track and is still gaining on Kimi Raikkonen. And by the time he starts to come back on circuit. He is almost ahead of Kimi Raikkonen and then is fully ahead. So clearly Daniel Ricciardo gained an advantage by going off the track and basically overtook 
Kimi Raikkonen by going off the circuit. So I guess with Daniel Ricciardo, he did deserve two five-second time penalties, but for the first one with Norris, I don't think it was necessarily, you know, forcing a driver off the track that deserved him a penalty. I think more so him passing Norris off the circuit was the penalty that it should have been in that instance. But I think you have to say that Ricardo was rightfully given, at the end of the day, two five-second time penalties, but again, not necessarily for the correct incident in one of those instances but before i go guys there's one more thing i want to analyze and that is the daniel ricardo roman grosjean incident earlier on in the race because i have to illustrate how dumb roman grosjean is in this incident because he complained somehow about what daniel ricardo did so you can see here ricardo going into the chicane on the mistral straight is breaking right around the outside as plenty of people did in the Grand Prix. And then you can see here is comfortably going around the outside. Now, as we move on, as you can see here with Ricardo's uh, rear tire, he does have a rear tire off the track, but because of this camera angle, I'm not sure if Ricardo did actually have all four tires off the track because we don't have, unfortunately, at the moment, and on board of Daniel Ricciardo racing Roman Grosjean, we only have the outer camera of what happened between Ricciardo and Grosjean. So from this angle, I think Ricciardo is on the circuit, but it's very, very close. It's very, very close. I am willing to be proven wrong on this, but it is, again, very close in this incident. But the reason Grosjean for me is such an idiot, and also, I'm going to say it, is an absolute pussy. Is because he complained that Daniel Ricciardo dangerously came back on circuit and pushed him off the track. And that is not the case. So you can see here's Ricciardo comes back. Grosjean is not fully alongside, but is definitely there. But at this point, why is Roman Grosjean on the exit of the chicane trying to go round the outside? If you're behind in this type of uh, instance, you cannot go around the outside. You have to try and do a switch back on the exit to get a great run going up to turn 11, then turn 12 and the rest of the corners. Why Roman didn't do that and decided instead to just drive off the track and act as though Daniel Ricciardo pushed him off, which is not the case. Ricciardo absolutely did not do so. I don't get why he did that. And again... Ricardo, from the evidence I have seen so far with this incident, Ricardo, I don't believe, went off the track. So how did he re-enter the track dangerously when he never left it? How is that possible, Roman? How is that possible for you to say that he re-entered the track in the first place, but re-entered it in a dangerous manner? He didn't. He absolutely didn't. You just decided when there was no real space there to do so, to go round the outside on the exit of the chicane, when again, there was no space to do so, and it was a stupid thing to do. And I have to say, I have really got sick and tired of Roman Grosjean continuously complaining about, you know, drivers racing him hard, you know, having slight contact, for example, Perez in Canada, Leclerc in Monaco, also Bottas last year at the French Grand Prix. Roman has to be the biggest baby on the grid. And I'll say it again, he is, compared to the other drivers on the grid, an absolute pussy when it comes to racing. And I'm definitely going to be making a video on Roman Grosjean pretty soon because even though, as you guys will know, I have definitely supported the guy and I have... Uh, supported him when people were very critical of him. After the last few races, I honestly am done with Roman Grosjean. I can't take it anymore. He's just not good enough anymore for Formula 1. Yes, the Haas car is not good, but it's not like Roman Grosjean is getting the best out of that car. He absolutely is not. But there you go, guys. That is the incident analysis for the 2019 French Grand Prix. Of course, I'd hope for more incidents to analyse, but that's just the way it is. Hopefully, there is more to analyse from the race in Austria next week. Again, 
Don't forget to join us for watch alongs and reviews in Austria next weekend. As of course, it would be great to have every single one of you along for that. But guys, don't forget to comment down below what you thought of this video. And also, what did you think of these incidents? Was Daniel Ricciardo for you deserving of getting the two five second time penalties that he did get? And for Roman Grosjean, what did you think of his complaining in this incident? Let me know what you think in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like this video for more videos like this. But guys, until the podcast preview in the Austrian Grand Prix, and until this weekend for the Austrian Grand Prix, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.